Um, so this is number one. I'm going to use a torch. What else do we need? We need some wire, some soldering wire, which is something like this you can buy in a store. But there's different types. Um, usually, soldering goes to a temperature of, let's say, around 300 degrees. Um, so those soldering wires that you can use have temper different temperature ranges. So you get some that are at lower temperatures. And I got one here. So it, it melts around, I think, 70 to 80 degrees. So it's very low. But a lot of them contain heavy metals. So not really a healthy thing. Um, so usually I can use them. But, um, but usually I use a normal solder wire that is like maybe 170, 200, 30, 300 degrees, and just regular stuff that I use here. Um, but then you start to use it and it's not working out. So the question is, you try to solder it, you have an iron, and all you get is small balls. And it's not sticking to the iron, it's not sticking to your model, you end up with a mess and you say, okay, I don't like this anymore. So what actually happened? The trouble is, <clears throat> um, uh, soldering only works when the surface is clean so the solder can adhere. Now, what is metals usually doing when you keep them in the open? What is me a metal doing? It's rusting. it's rusting, it's oxidizing. So even if you may not see it, it will have a small layer of oxidization on it. And with oxidization, another metal is not sticking to it. So typically you have to get rid of the rust. But how can you do this? Of course, you can sand it a little bit, it's one option. But uh, what you normally do is you use what is called flux. Flux is basically a liquid um, that is taking the oxidization surface away and makes it clean um, so that the solder can adhere to the surface. So that's one of the tasks. Another one, uh, it, makes, uh, uh, it makes the solder more liquid, so more flowing in all to the crevices, so it can just spread easier, which is very essential because otherwise it's not working. But let's have a look at the bowl. I can use butter. I don't need oxidization. Um, and um, what I'm going to do right now is very easy. I dip a little bit of this thing here into the butter and maybe smear it a little bit. Okay. Now it's getting difficult if it's, is it visible? Can you see what I'm doing here? Yeah? Okay. Did you see it? I have right now a small ball on here. Maybe it's visible to some. You see the small ball in front? A small ball of the... So this means the surface does not take the, the liquid, the, 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 the solder. So it's going to form a ball with, which is energetically a good form to keep the energy. This is why we get balls. Of course for you modelers it may be cool because if you need small balls that are perfect you can do it just like this and you can use them maybe on a, on a, as a button or whatever and glue them on so you can make small balls. But for us if you want to stick metals together it's not an option. So we need to clean the surface. And this is what the flux is doing for us. I mean, it would probably, it could take the butter away, in a way, and because it's making it more liquid. So it, it is helpful, but normally I would rather tend to wash it off with some detergent to first clean the metal, maybe sand it a little bit, and then finally use a flux. But just to show this right now, You don't have to take a lot. If I take a lot, um, then if I put a lot of heat to it, it starts sometimes to evaporate and the solder is just jumping off because it's like a small explosion. Don't worry. <laughs> small explosion. <laughs> okay. Okay, no ball anymore. 
instead you see something, you see a silver color. Silver color, if it's shiny, like silver, is always good. Because this means you get a good soldering connection. Um, there's also bad soldering connections. You see that I'm doing something right now uh, that maybe people tend to do different. Um, if you use a soldering iron, then sometimes people think I just have to dip the soldering iron into the solder. And then at this moment the solder melts, which is fine. But the problem is the connection is only getting good if the material is hot enough to do the attachment. Otherwise you get what is called a cold soldering. The solder is hot enough to melt, but it's not attaching to the metal. So in best you get a connection as if you would use super glue, which means a slight turn and it's off again. Okay. So this means um, in order to get a good soldering, the larger part, which basically is the, the thing you want to solder together, has to get the right temperature. And the temperature of this part lets then uh, heats then up the flux and heats then up the solder and lets it melt. So I'm not melting the solder, I'm uh, heating up the part to melt the solder. And this way we have something that is, that is correct. Um, the effect about the butter and the oxidization you also get with a soldering iron sometimes. Um, another advantage of this is a soldering iron you need on the table, you need some cables with it and it's on all the time. Right? Because you want to solder, maybe five minutes, ten minutes later you need it again, you don't uh, turn it off. So you waste a lot of energy and of course the heat on the tip will, um, take, uh, will, will make the tip oxidize over time. So you always have to take care of the tip, clean it, maybe put some flux on it, maybe retin it uh, to be able. This thing is only on when I actually am soldering. Otherwise it's off. And, and another thing is the cable of a soldering, I mean it would not be the first cable of a soldering iron that I would destroy, it would be already the second. Because you have the hot tip, you put it there, oh there's the cable and already you melt into it and I don't like this. So this is for me a way to do it. Um, and this is another, uh, that's what I wanted to say, another way where you get those balls is if the tip of the soldering iron is oxidized, then of course if you touch the solder you will get the ball again because it's not taking off. So whenever you get a ball, the surfaces you are working with are not prepared because they are oxidized or dirty. So you need to clean them otherwise it will just not work for you. Okay, the second thing is heat the part not the solder. Okay. Well, what else want to say? The flux, the flux, the flux that I'm using on this here is acidic. Um, so it's like it's like acid. So you have to clean your hands. Don't touch too much of your clothes, otherwise it will maybe get holes or whatever. Uh, so that's one thing. And you have also to clean the parts because acid is in the end oxidizing again. So after a while the parts will rust. I know a lot of people who don't do it and I've never seen something happening to the models. But I think if you want to be sure that nothing happens to the models, you rather clean it a little bit with soapy water or whatever or alcohol and I think that, that will do the trick. Another material to use, which is also used in um, radio industry, is colophonium. It's called um, solder honey but it's colophonium. This one is actually rather reducing or neutral, which will not harm the model, but it's like, it's really like honey. So it's a little smeary. And if we later wanna uh, maybe put on color and whatever, we would have to clean the model very thoroughly. So for me, this was not a choice, but it's working nicely as well and gives good soldering results. But you would have to clean everything after. Why would I go all the way and use photo edge parts? Okay, tool handle, tool clamps, of course they are finer, but a box like this, why would I do it at all? <laughs> why not use the one out of the box? Why are you here? Why do you want to solder? <laughs> okay, for me the answer is very clear. Um, what I cannot do the, to do the plastic box, I cannot damage it. And basically I couldn't open it in the end. If I want to damage something, like giving a small crunch, like a fender, crunch it a little bit, 
I couldn't do it with the plastic with getting real good results because it's made of different parts. They will spread a little bit in different angles. The plastic is one part, so it will just crunch a little bit if you thin it down and use heat. So, um, and if I want to crunch it and I use super glue, what will happen if I then press it a little bit? It goes apart, it just falls apart and um, I cannot crunch it anymore correctly. So the use of metal parts with super glue to crunch something on a fender or on a box is making no sense because you don't get the result. It's, uh, if it's more fine, okay, you can go for it, that's okay. <coughs> but plastic can look as well as, so I wouldn't really do the effort. So I can crunch it, but in order to crunch it, it has to be stable. So the connection has to be good enough to be able to take the crunch of something. And this is why I solder. But there's another reason to solder. I made those as well, and I think you are the next one to make something like this. Can you glue something like this? Just take it. I have a few of them here. <laughs> okay. It's just the same. Get it. Another one here. One last thing we have to talk about before we actually get you soldering, guys. I hope you're all in for it. Is soldering is not like super gluing. If you have a gap like this, then well, just smear a little more super glue on it and sand it down or take some Tamaya putty, it will work out. Everything is good. Soldering does only work if the parts actually touch. I mean, touch can be a small gap, but you cannot cross a gap. So if, the, if, you, if you fold up a box like this here, then the corners have to be sitting on each other. You cannot like have a gap like this and say, okay, I just use more solder. More solder is not working here. So it has to be a small amount of solder, but they have to touch which means there's a small gap, but not a large gap. And then if you do it from the inside and you do it like this, normally you don't need to clean up anything. In case, just a little sanding and you're happy again. So this is something you have to do. And also, same with super glue. Um, once you're soldering, you may not move it. Moving parts or parts that are not stable will not solder because at the moment the solder is getting cold enough to stabilize and there's a movement on, it doesn't touch anymore, and it's gone. So this is why I use a board like this. You can touch it, it's made of mineral. It's like a little fragile. You can stick needles in it. They use it for jewelry making. It takes all the heat, so it will not burn. And I can then put on and stabilize the things. So let's start with um, the, the small thing with the wire inside. Let's do something like this. How do you call this material? Huh? What's the name of this material? I have no idea what the name of this material is. That's a very big name. Huh? That's a very big name. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, but, but usually if you go to a jeweler, what, what guys are for jewelry are using, they normally they have soldering material and they also have those things where they solder on, which is like of this consistency, you can put needles in it. Uh, in the beginning I used a tile, like a bathroom tile. The trouble with it, it takes a lot of temperature. So you put temperature on, but a lot flows away, which means you have to stay longer on the object, which means in the worst case, you anneal it. You know annealing, what it means? If like this material right now is springy, it has a special tension in there. If I heat it up and, and let it glow, then it will change its behavior. Can you pick it up, please? <laughs> no. Wait a second. Okay, and right now, it's completely weak. Um, for example, normally you press those lines in there into the box and I like the springiness, so I don't anneal it. Because once it's annealed, it is behaving like paper almost. Um, 
but you never get it back into the real shape. Just. Let's do something like this for a start. Right? <laughs> okay, I'm the first one to do it. Um, I'll grab this here. I forgot my drill, so I'm gonna do it like this. I take the knife and, well, maybe... Um, yep, here we go. I think that's good enough. So, Okay, I just use this here to keep it stable right now. So I don't have to hold it and touch it and nothing will move. Of course, usually if I have a drill, I will drill it through, stick it in and it's more stable in the end because then the soldering will be in the object itself. Right now it's only on the top, which is a little sad, but it's still okay. So. That's of course way too much solder. Usually I slice them like almost like a salami, very thin. But then I think nobody would be able to see it anymore. So really not too much of a trick here and this is how everything works who's next um, yes you have to be careful of course but <laughs> I use another trick here um, I use tape because um, of course when you think about tape like the yellow tape you think it will burn immediately why should you use uh, tape the thing is um, if I don't put the heat on very long, it will maybe get a little dark, but that's it. So the only thing you have to take care of um, is if you, so, still okay. I don't need longer to heat the part. The only thing you should not do is rip the part. Because if the fibers are sticking out, somewhere and the flame is getting there then it will immediately burn you don't want this so whenever you use a tape you cut it so then everything is stable right so let's just do one part of the box here just to show this because it's basically all the same what I did before is I pressed it together so it has a nice fit if it wouldn't have a nice fit, I would maybe take needles or clamps or whatever I have to make a nice fit. But in this case, I did it already and this is necessary. So then I put it in a way so I'm happy. Like right now I can have it sitting like this and the, the line I'm going to solder is down there so it's not a worry. But the, the suction also works against gravity because of the flux. So it will even suck it a little up. But okay. So next thing is, oh, about the flux, um, there's different kinds of flux, I told you. This one is not available here yet, but I used any kind. I, I got to the, 
um, I think it was a Belgian media market, no, not media market, uh, Obi or some kind of a store like this. And there was a blue bottle with flux. Excuse me, it was a little more sticky and I didn't really like it because I like it more fluent, but I worked with it and it works nicely as well. So, so I make, can you see something here? No, maybe not. I make a small line of flux here. Maybe not so much. Otherwise, as I said, the solder will then jump off. You will laugh and I look stupid. Then, Okay, basically that's it, just come closer, huh? it's just sitting in there right now, nothing, nothing bad, um, and then have a look again please. I think it's a nice soldering. So this is basically what I would like to do. I would like to solder them together. Uh, the trouble with wires, and especially the smaller they get is, sometimes they have a coating, like this here is coated. This will not work, so you have to sand the coat off. That was the small thing, which is gone by now, or, yeah. It's here, okay, it's still here. Okay, so I had to sand it a little bit to get uh, the, the lacquer off then I can solder it in this position. But there's something happening, because if it takes temperature, it will spread its length. So if I put them like this, and I put a lot of heat there, then of course this one will maybe creep under the other one, and then it's not on top of each other, but more like this. Or if I would just put them there, they maybe would be blown away a little bit, or moving, or whatever. So what I'm actually gonna do is, um, yeah. You don't use blue tech for it? I don't use blue tech because if blue tech gets too hot, it starts to melt and smell very bad. And I'm not sure if this is very healthy. Okay. And uh, I've seen this also that some people put like metal parts on the blue tech and then solder it there. Um, with a soldering iron, I guess you make it away with the flame of the heat. It will just melt and you will get in a sticky mess, which you don't want to have. And Bluetech wasn't really made to do this job. But I have this paper here and I'm very happy with it. It's getting sticky as well, but it's okay. So... Sorry guys. I need to have a look. <laughs> Uh, not working. Uh. Okay. So then, well, Okay. 
Actually, I didn't really see too much because it's too far away. I think it's not a nice connection. But it's of course there. So I'm not happy with the shine of it. But it's connected, so just give it a test. It's not hot anymore. <laughs> is, is this all girls here? <laughs> this is something... Okay, maybe I should set, say something to it. Um, some of the solder wires are very specific. Uh, like, I, I came across a Voyager set, and in the Voyager set they were nice frames for one of those guards that you have on top of a Puma or whatever, not a Puma, a two, uh, SDKF set 2341 on those frames. And those frames were so nice. And um, a guy, Steph, Steph Snyers, soldering with the iron, he said, I'll show you. And it didn't work at all until I finally found out it is uh, stainless steel. And stainless steel, you cannot solder with something like this. If you're lucky, there's some solder that contains silver, and then you may get away with it um, to, to solder it. But soldering, for, for brass soldering, everything like this will work easily. But make sure you don't have stainless steel, otherwise uh, you're just like soldering and it falls apart again. And you're very unhappy then, and you think you cannot do it. I soldered for one day those frames, and when I was home, everything was falling apart again because there was no connection, because it was a normal solder wire. So that was very bad. But um, oh, something else you may want to use in case something goes wrong. You have a, a soldering and it goes wrong and it's not working at all. Then you basically have to clean the part. You cannot go on top of it and on top of it, it will just be a mess. So better try to make it really nice in the beginning, take your time, set it up, clean the parts, use a, um, a, a, a medium amount of flux, not too much, because it will burn as well. Um, and take your time until everything is settled and you're happy with the part before you put on the, the heat. And, and everything is fine. Sometimes you can find in stores things like this. It is like a, a wire um, made of um, fibers. And if you heat solder, it will suck in some of the solder. But there's also some vacuum things to suck up solder to do it. Yeah, exactly. You can find them in a, in a store where they have electronic stuff. Because if there's too much solder on there, you, you can only sand it down, file it away. Um, everything else will fail. But this is why if I'm soldering, of course, I try to solder from a side that is not visible. Because if I make a mess here, who's gonna know? Yep. And in case you use very small amounts of solder, as I usually do, you saw me today using a lot, because usually I use a lot less. Um, it's still gonna be stable, and it's not gonna be visible because it's creeping completely into the corner, and you're, you're good to go. So. Any more questions? If you you sure. have to solder, for example, this long, long, yes. uh, long length. Do you use that length of solder material as well, or just two or three very small I, in this parts? In this case, it's actually two corners only. Ah, okay. But let's say I have a longer part. Yeah. Then I would decide, I would try, of course, to go in one go. Uh -huh. But maybe if the part is, part is very... Okay, when I know, the reason why I would not solder is because the part is not hot enough. So if I start maybe in the middle, then maybe the heat is spreading to both sides and I'm happy. I wouldn't then start on one side, I would start in the middle. Um, and in case it's not going this way, then I would solder as far as it goes, then clean the part, put something there like a wet uh, towel, not towel, a wet, uh, wet part or some clamps um, to keep it closed. So if I put heat there again, it will not open up. And then I would solder the rest. Oh, that's how I would do it. So when you have a, a length like this, it's only necessary maybe to solder the, the edges? Um, if you know that there's like the back side here. The back side here would be a long way if I sold it complete. But I think, what did they do in reality? Yeah. 
they would probably put it there that one two yeah, three yeah, spots yeah, that's it, so yeah. what I would do is I would maybe that what he said I would maybe pre tin here three spots yeah. then do the same here pre tin it then I would put it together put some flux into the crevices heat it up and it should be gone good and and even if only two are sticking yeah. it's gonna stick on there's nothing done, it's just folded. I think one of the essential things is the folding itself. And I still struggle with it sometimes because the folding has to be really nice because then you only, only then you get nice corners and everything is good. Okay. <laughs> if there's any more questions, right now it's time to ask. I think I showed everything. I know everything that I know 